Hey, this is Keith Coughlin with the Joy Sage. Oh, there you are. Hi, my name is Keith Coughlin with the Joy Sage Agency. Um, I'm an outside salesman for us, covering Middle Earth or Central Virginia area. Live down in Culpeper, cover down to Stanton, across to Fredericksburg, through Charlottesville, north to Woodbridge, and out to Winchester. I've uh, been with the company a little over 20 years now. Started in the warehouse. Worked inside sales for a couple of years under the Watts brands, and then uh, moved to the outside sales probably about 15 years ago. So, and I'll probably be here till I die with four kids to feed. You know, it'll be a while. But today we're going to get into some stuff with uh, backflow preventers and backflow prevention. Um, we're going to start off with a little segment just on the basics of backflow, some term terminology, words, stuff like that. You're going to see and things that we need from you when you're calling us, asking us to get a backflow for you. So today we're going to start off with the basics of backflow. We're going to, I'm talking very basic, so we're going to get into the very skim level of this, but we're going to just talk about some definitions and terms of what you need to give us so we can help you find out what you need. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about cross-connection. Cross-connection is the actual or potential cross-connection of your potable water system. So contaminants of gas or whatever could be mixing in. So that's your first thing is a cross-connection. So first thing you're going to do is you want to do total backflow pre prevention, okay? Total backflow prevention or protection in a building is going to be your isolation and containment. Isolation would be in a multi-story building where you have apartments upstairs, residential, commercial on the downstairs, and maybe offices in between. We want to make sure we're isolating each one of those contaminants from the doctor's office to the brewery to the pizza hut to the residents upstairs. But then we also want to make sure we keep those contained inside that building. So we want to isolate in between and contain from the outside of the building to the street. Uh, the ABCs of a cross-connection control program, it's the authority. So who's going to be the one enforcing this? The backflow preventer itself, the actual assembly that you're going to be putting in. The certified testers and specialists out there. So you have to be certified. I know in the state of Virginia where I cover a majority of my market, uh, a plumber can install the backflow, but to actually open it up and test it and work on it, you have to be certified by the state. That's not a Joyce agency. That's not a Watts thing. That's a state code. Uh, detailed and defensible records. So the CYA part of it is cover your butt. Um, you want to make sure all your records are straight. Once a year, you should be testing these things. When they're installed, they need to be tested and certified. So we want to make sure you keep those records. And then education and training, something like this having the Joyce Agency come to your office, come to your job site, whatever, to help train you on backflow prevention. All right, so backflow, what is it? Backflow is the unwanted reverse flow of liquid gases or other substances in your potable water system, okay? So it's the liquid or gases, right? Any kind of backflow. Back siphonage, what is back siphonage? Back siphonage is caused by a negative or sub-atmospheric pressure in the distribution piping of the potable water supply. So imagine this, if you're in a high rise and there's a big fire in the building next to you and they hook up a bunch of fire trucks to it, they start sucking that water out of that main, it's going to back siphon and pull the water out of your building to supply their building. Okay, that's back siphonage. If you have the proper backflow preventers in place, that doesn't happen. It doesn't allow for you to pull that back in. Back pressure, so you have back siphonage and back pressure. Back pressure is backflows caused by an increase in pressure on the downstream side of a piping system. Best thing to think of this is your water heater. You're heating the water up, it's expanding, it's creating pressure, the pressure needs to go somewhere. So it can push back into your system. If you have a boiler and you have chemicals in the boiler, if you don't have the proper protection, that can push those chemicals back into your potable water and then you're drinking out of your faucet, showering in it, whatever. So those are your two different types. So we wanna know if it's back pressure or back siphonage, okay? Back siphonage is always a possibility. Back pressure is not, but it can happen. Uh, degree of hazard, what's the difference? So we have high hazard and low hazard, just like it sounds. Low hazard contaminant, there we go, is pollutant. It smells funny, looks funny, tastes funny, but it doesn't really hurt the quality of the water. Um, best example is a pub over in England where the lady's kitchen faucet was tapped into the pub downstairs. She's getting beer out of her tap. I don't think that's a hazard at all, but it is low hazard. It's not going to make her sick, but it's not the water she's paying for. High hazard, on the other hand, is going to be something that's going to make you sick, going to hurt you, could kill you. Uh, in Virginia, we had a case where somebody was doing lawn maintenance and mixing up some chemicals to, for their lawn, 
they had the garden hose in the bucket with the chemicals down the street. The main got cut, back siphonage, pulled those chemicals back in, and that entire neighborhood had contaminated water, and everybody had to have their water cut off to get it cleaned out. So those are your different things. High hazard, low hazard. So when you call, now I need to know back pressure, back siphonage. Is it high hazard or is it low hazard? Okay. So four questions I need you to ask. Just like I said, back pressure or back siphonage, high hazard, low hazard. What's the application? Is it 24-7, 365 pressure? And then what's the orientation? Is it going to go inside? Is it going to go outside? If it's going outside, we're the safety cover rep. We got you covered there. We can put a safety cover on it. If it's going inside, is it going vertical or horizontal? Um, not all valves are approved for both, so we need to know that. And then we just know the jurisdiction. I want to thank you again. If there's anything you need from the Joyce Agency, please go to our website for online trainings or trainings in person. We can schedule that for you. It's thejoyceagency.com. Feel free to call us. These trainers are not for us to not be, come out and see you. We're still going to do that, so please reach out to us. Let us know if there's any other trainings you want on our line cards there on the website. We have all that lined up as well. But thank you again, and I look forward to shooting some more of these things and tripping through with all of them and having a good time. Thanks.